Okay, okay, let's knock this out of the way. This is my non-wrestling related Q&A. Thank you to everybody in advance for sending me questions. Uh, for those wondering about uh, why I didn't do an Extreme Rules preview or anything like that, um, to me, the card for Extreme Rules was very WrestleMania Part 2 y, for lack of a better description. Um, basically, the entire card is a bunch of WrestleMania rematches with one marquee match, and that, that being Cena and Lesnar. But I've already talked about Cena and Lesnar uh, quite a bit, so I, I didn't really have any, you know, too much to say about the pay per view. Uh, no, I'm not saying it's the worst card ever or anything. I just didn't really have anything to add that I didn't already say about WrestleMania. You know, or these feuds, you know, nothing new to add to these feuds uh, from what I had previously said in my WrestleMania previews and reviews and whatever. Um, I am going to do a video talking about TNA's uh, Open Fight Night concept. Um, not so much reviewing the first one, because I'll be honest, it wasn't a very good show. It was actually a bad show. Uh, but not because of the concept. It really had everything to do with the stupid Bischoff family bullshit that I do not care about at all whatsoever. Um, but I do have a lot to say about the concept of the open fight night and, uh, some format changes in wrestling in general, which I've talked about before, but I want to expand on that a little bit. But let's get to the Q&A and let's get started with Tommy Richman. Are you a Robert De Niro and or Al Pacino fan? Yes, I am. I love both of them. They're, they're great. Uh, actually, one of my favorite movies is Scent of a Woman. I... Uh, not only is it fun to parody and fun to kind of quote hoo ha, but I just love Pacino's performance in that movie. It's just a great, great character that conveys so many different emotions. And I actually believe that he was blind, and I think that's my favorite part of it. Like I never doubted for a minute that he was blind, even though I know Al Pacino's not blind. Uh, just a great performance, great movie. Uh, I also, I mean, De Niro is great in just about anything he's in, even the bad stuff. Uh, I. Love Goodfellas. I think that's a great movie. Uh, I might be, you know, no offense to The Godfather, that's a great movie, but my favorite mob movie of all time is Goodfellas. That's just a fantastic flick. And he also asks, do you like Skittles? Yes, I do. Skittles are great. Um, I prefer M&M's because I'm more of a chocolate whore, but uh, yeah, Skittles are good every now and then. I haven't had them in a while, but yeah, Skittles, Skittles taste great. Okay, Brad192944, have you seen any of the Coen Brothers movies, and which are your favorites? Um, yeah, I really like the Coen Brothers. <laughs> I really like the Coen Brothers. I think they're great filmmakers. Um, I really liked uh, True Grit, really liked No Country for Old Men. Uh, but I think my favorite is The Big Lebowski. Um, I just, you know, it's one of the defining movies of the 90s. It's just a great flick, great characters, great writing, uh, great interaction between the characters. And I, I really like movies that are kind of, um, I guess you could say ensemble pieces, but just really great relationships and interactions between characters. Whenever you can get, like, a bunch of great, well-written characters bouncing off of each other, it usually yields some great shit. And I... Big Lebowski is endlessly, endlessly entertaining on, on so many levels. So, yeah, the Coen brothers, they get a thumbs up from me. They're great. Okay. Toby Dyer sends in the following questions. You mentioned in a previous video that you said you had some problems with Batman Begins. Could you expand on your issues with Batman Begins, the good and the bad? Um, I could do an entire video on my feelings of Batman Begins, but uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, it's not a bad movie. I, I will say that it's a good Batman film. I enjoy it. It's better than the three films in the 90s. I didn't like Returns. I didn't like Forever. And God knows how the whole world feels about Batman and Robin. It's a step up from those movies. I think the tone and the approach they took was where the, se the series needed to go. And I think it's a step in the right direction. But when people tell me that it's, quote unquote, a perfect film, I go, eh. No, no, it's not. I, I don't, I don't think it's as good as the '89 Burton Batman film, which I love. I, I think that's a fantastic film. I don't think it's anywhere near the level of that film yet. This film gets heavily praised, and I think it's, it might even be in the IMDb, the IMDb top 250, which is absolutely ridiculous. And my problem with Batman Begins, um, again, when people tell me it's a perfect film, I go really well. Number one, the action scenes are terrible. Uh, that's a big... The, the fight scenes are just 
awful, poorly shot. They're shot in super close up to the point where I can't even tell what's going on. And uh, that was a problem. Um, the Scarecrow, uh, great actor. I think his name was Killian Murphy. He was fantastic. He was great. But he got bitched out. Um, I had to watch the Scarecrow, uh, one of my favorite Batman villains, get bitched out at the end by Katie Holmes and a stun gun. Not cool. <laughs> I didn't like that. And, you know, if people... Because comic book movies are normally graded very harshly on how the characters are treated and presented. And I don't know how Katie Holmes bitching out Scarecrow hasn't become more of a thing or more of a problem among uh, fans. But it was a problem for me. I, I was sitting there like, Yay, it's Scarecrow in! just got taken out in 10 seconds. Wow, that sucked. Um, so yeah, I didn't like that. Uh, and I also wasn't a fan of them doing the origin story because we all know the origin story for Batman. It would be like if they tried to do the origin story for Superman again. It's like, what's the point? We all know it. It's like, all right, parents, you know, in Superman's case, planet, boom, blows up, becomes Earth. Yay, we, we know the story. Batman, I think pretty much everybody knows that his parents, or even before this movie, knew that his parents were killed in front of him, and that's what led to him becoming Batman. And, you know, it was interesting to see some of the training and stuff, but the origin story was just not something I was dying to see, because I already, I already knew it. And uh, I, I felt like it was enough of a common thing, a well-known thing, that I, it just, I didn't feel like it was a story that needed to be told. Um, and, and that's just me. That's just personal opinion. Uh... And there are a couple of other things, like, and this is where Nolan kind of opens himself up to criticism, I think, where he takes this super realistic approach, super, super realistic approach uh, to a comic book film. And I'm like, well, okay, if you're taking this super realistic approach, how can somebody get tied to a spotlight and not burn to death? Uh, how can the Batmobile, which I hated the Batmobile, I hate the Batmobile in, in the Nolan films because it's so fucking big. <laughs> it's like two lanes wide. It, this is this ridiculous size thing. And I'm just sitting there thinking, how the hell can the authorities not trace that thing? I mean, look at the the path of destruction that the, that thing leaves everywhere it goes. How could you not trace that thing back? J just follow the treads to the Batcave. And I think you'll be able to find, it, <laughs> find out who Batman is. Um... So that kind of bugged me. Uh, the microwave emitter thing. Um, how are people not blowing up? Because, you know, people are mostly made out of water. If this thing evaporates water, why are people not evaporating too? Uh, that's another thing. And again, because he takes this realistic approach, I kind of have to ask these questions. Because yeah, you kind of open yourself up to these criticisms. And I, again, I, I didn't feel like it was a bad movie. I'm just saying it was, there's a lot of nitpicky stuff. Um, actually, if you listen to, uh, James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, he does movie reviews for Spike.com and on his own website, Cinemasker.com as well, and he did a review for Batman Begins, and he pretty much summed up exactly how I felt about this movie. It's not a bad movie, but it is overrated. And I'll be honest, there are movies that have come out that have gotten heavily bashed, uh, Indiana Jones 4 comes to mind, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, uh, Spider-Man 3, definitely, um, I had just as many problems with... Batman Begins as I did with Spider-Man 3, but Spider-Man 3 is the one that catches shit. I don't understand that, but um, I, I don't know what it is. Um, Batman Begins, to me, is just an overrated film. A good film, uh, but heavily overrated, and I think I've lined up all the problems that I had with it. Uh, your next question is a follow-up. What did you think of The Dark Knight? In what ways was it better than Batman Begins, and what do you expect from The Dark Knight Rises? Uh, Dark Knight was perfect. I fucking loved The Dark Knight. That was, uh, you know, the origin story was out of the way. Now we were getting the Batman movie that I wanted. Heath Ledger as the Joker gave this once-in-a-lifetime performance that was just phenomenal. And they took, they did so many things with the story that just kept me on, just, uh, kept me on the edge of my seat. When they, you know, spoiler alert in case you haven't seen it, when they killed the leading lady, uh, Rachel Dawes, uh, by the way, that was another thing about Batman Begins. Katie Holmes was fucking terrible. Okay, a definite upgrade the, going to Maggie Gyllenhaal. Normally I hate casting changes in movies, but I was willing to make an exception here. Maggie Gyllenhaal, even though the character was still kind of a bitch, it was still, like, the performance was much, much better in The Dark Knight. But, uh, yeah, when they killed her, I was like, okay, all bets are off. Anything can fucking happen in the story. Like, at the end when Two-Face is fucking holding a, a kid... At gunpoint, I'm like, yeah, this kid might get shot. I, I, anything can happen now in this movie. And 
it was uh it was just a great movie, great crime drama, a lot of great twists and turns in the story, great presentation. Uh, my only real knock on it is Bale's Batman voice, which is kind of absurd, but, uh, you know, Two-Face's story was great. Uh, and like I said, the Joker was, it was the performance of a lifetime, and I, I'm just sad that Heath Ledger, uh, you know, did drugs and, and <laughs> had to pass away, because it was obvious to me that they were going to bring him back and do something big with him in the third movie, maybe even tie him in with, uh, you know, the League of Shadows. Or have them clash or something. I don't know. It was, uh, but it was obvious to me that they were going to bring him back. Um, what do I expect from uh, Dark Knight Rises? I expect a good movie. I'm not expecting it to be as good as The Dark Knight because it's just... I, and this happens a lot where the second movie is really good and then expectations for the third one are just raised to such an insane degree uh, that it just never lives up. I'm expecting a really good movie. I just feel like the series peaked at the Dark Knight, and my interest is kind of going into other places. Like, I really, I can't wait for the Avengers next week. That's the one I'm excited for. It's like, because that's the one that's been built up for four years, and I was like, wow, we're, we are actually going to get this movie. That's kind of awesome. But I expect the Dark Knight Rises to be really good. Uh, and, and I will say this, I am ki I'm kind of expecting Batman to die in this movie, which if they do that, that would be ballsy to fucking kill Bruce Wayne in a movie. I, I think that would be a, just a really ballsy thing to do, and, and that would be a way to close out the, the, the Nolan films. So uh, here's hoping for the best with The Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight, fucking amazing. Major improvement over Batman Begins. Well, I don't want to... See, I, again, it sounds like I'm ragging on Batman Begins. It was the perfect step forward from Batman Begins, much like how Batman Begins was the perfect step forward from the crap we had to endure in the 90s. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, Dark Knight is, is just a perfect film all around. Uh, action scenes are better. Uh, um, just everything all around is just presented better. Uh, the story's a little bit more uh, a little bit more to my liking. It was just an all around better movie. And your final question: How bad did you find Superman Returns? Can you also comment on the good and bad of other Superman movies and shows? What do you want out of the Man of Steel reboot? Um, Superman Returns, fucking horrible. It was boring as hell. I, I don't know how you make Superman boring. I mean, whether you like Superman or not, I, I don't, I don't know how you make that boring, but I was sitting there just bored out of my skull. Uh, they made him like a, you know, whiny emo stalker person with a, with an illegitimate kid. I'm like, come on. Uh, <laughs> you're trying too hard. And I'm just even more pissed off that Brian Singer left X-Men to make this. Which is like, I mean, I'll be honest, with all his flaws, X-Men 3 was better than this. At least I wasn't bored <clears throat> with X-Men 3. But, um, yeah, I had a lot of problems with Superman Returns. Other versions of Superman that I like, uh, I, you know, I never watched Smallville. I just, I just never watched it. Lois and Clark, never watched that. I never watched any of the old Supermans uh, from, like, the 50s. Uh, who played him? George Reeves, I think. I, I never watched any of those. Um, but I did watch the, uh, Christopher Reeves films, um, I l really liked 1 and 2, I think 1 is one of the better origin movies, uh, for any superhero, uh, you know, even with its flaws, like, the ending is totally ridiculous, but overall, I think it's one of the better versions of Superman, and, and how can you not love Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, he was fantastic, um, and I love Superman too. uh, again, they did a great job of finding good opponents for Superman in the Kryptonian Criminals, and I love General Zod. <laughs> Kneel before Zod. I, I love love that performance. Uh, and yeah, so Superman 2 is really great. Superman 3 is a bad Richard Pryor film that features Superman, uh, so it's kind of forgettable. Superman 4 is fucking awful, but in a really funny way. <laughs> kind of like Batman and Robin. Like, Batman and Robin I can kind of look at now and laugh, uh, but Superman 4 is fucking atrocious. Uh... And uh, one version of Superman that I have to say I really like, I really like the animated series in the 90s. Uh, I think that's one of the better... Kind of like how uh, the Batman animated series in the 90s, I kind of view as the definitive Batman. I've kind of got that with Superman, too. I, I just really liked what they did with that series, and uh, they, they did a great job. I mean, that whole DC animated universe is really good. The Justice League show is really good as well. Uh... So yeah, those are the versions of Superman that I'm familiar with, and I, I've come to really like Superman. You know, I didn't like him that much as a kid, but I've come to like him more as... It's kind of like, I just kind of grew up, and I was like, you know, I, I, you know, the Christopher Reeves films, you know, the cartoon, I, just, I dig it, I get it, I, I kind of see the appeal in this. Plus, I have to say, one of my favorite video games of all time, 
Super Nintendo, the death, uh, the death and return of Superman. I, not a lot of people know about it, but it's a really, really good video game. And you know, for anybody that has sour grapes over uh, Superman 64, which I thankfully never played. I almost bought it, but I something I don't know what happened. Like I almost bought it. I was in the store, but something prevented me from buying it. And I am so thankful that I missed out on that one. But uh, the Super Nintendo Superman game is very, very good. And if you want to find a good Superman game, uh, hit up eBay and go find that one if you can. Okay, DX Super Cool asks, If you could make a movie out of any comic book-based character that has not been featured in a movie yet, what would it be? I, you know, it was really, I had to think about this one for a while because so many of the big ones have already been done. Even, you know, the shitty ones. Like, okay, Daredevil, movie was a piece of shit, but he's been in a movie. Green Lantern, I wanted a Green Lantern movie, but then when I saw the preview, I was like, wow, this looks awful. And I didn't see it, and I'm kind of thankful because pretty much everybody's told me it's awful. Uh, and I heard that Parallax looks like a piece of shit, which is kind of appropriate. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I had a hard time thinking, it's like, gee, who are the big ones that haven't been done? We're getting the Avengers. Uh, Spider-Man's been done. X-Men have been done. Batman, Superman, obviously. Those were the two big ones that kind of got the ball rolling on, on uh, comic book films. Um, Fantastic Four, Incredible Hulk. I, I mean, I really had a hard time thinking. Even Watchmen has a movie now. I never thought there'd be a Watchmen movie, but, uh, you know, it's just all the big ones have been done, uh, or at least most of the big ones, and the only one I could really think of that I would like to see, I, I wouldn't mind a Wonder Woman movie, because A, Wonder Woman's kind of cool, B, you get a hot chick in that star-spangled outfit, wouldn't mind that, and if the story's good and everything works, and you get the right girl in the role, it could be awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, so I guess Wonder Woman, Flash 2, uh, Flash would be kind of interesting to see. But yeah, it's really weird, you know, when I was a kid, there were so many heroes that had never gotten movies, and now it's pretty much, like, almost everybody's gotten one, which is uh, kind of interesting. Okay, Spidey Senses 67 asks, what do you do for a living? And it's funny, I actually just started a job. Uh, by the way, I didn't get the job in Japan. So <laughs> I know I said I might be moving there, but no, that didn't, that didn't go through. Uh, but I just started working. I work for an employment agency uh, where I am an agent of the agency, and they outsource me to, uh, to their clients uh, for temp positions. So I work part time for these companies doing, you know, office work and uh, typing up reports and things of that nature. Um, so uh, working call centers, whatever. But I'm employed by the agency, so I get paid full time with benefits uh, working for the agency. So it's really interesting. Um, I, I just started. I'm only on my second assignment now, but it's uh, you know, it keeps me busy and it pays well. So it's, it's really cool. What is your favorite TV show from when you were a kid? Um, okay, there are a lot of cartoons I watched as a kid, but cartoons are going to come up a little later in the question and answer, so I'll get to that, uh, when we get there, but, uh, my favorite show as a kid, and this is going to sound really fucked up, but my favorite show as a kid was Unsolved Mysteries, that show hosted by Robert Stack. I'm five years old, and I'm watching stories of serial killers, fucking rapists, child killers, you name it, I'm watching just the most depraved shit you could possibly imagine on Unsolved Mysteries. Told to me through Robert Stack, who made it as scary as humanly possible. And that was one of the appeals of the show, was the atmosphere that they created. Just Robert Stack's uh, monologues and the settings he was standing in and the music. The f I can't... The music from that show still haunts me. Um, and, you know, I went through my childhood scared to death because that show, and there were ghost stories and alien stories too, but you could kind of tell those stories were bullshit. Um, and, uh, it, basically by the people being interviewed, it's like, yeah, I saw a ghost and I saw a UFO. And you see the footage that they took and it just looks like total bullshit. But the reenactments were awesome, uh, for the ghosts and the, uh, the alien stories. But the real stories, the criminal cases, were frightening. I mean, just downright frightening. Some of the reenactments were terrifying. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that stood out. There was one where this killer came in and just murdered... Uh, he shot at an old couple. He robbed him and shot at him. He only killed the wife. But uh, he had like, this long, stringy hair and uh, really like dark eyes. And just The, the reenactment was just terrifying. Um, and there was another one where a pregnant woman was stabbed. And again, this is shit. You can't make this shit up. A uh, pregnant woman got stabbed in a parking lot by some serial killer late at night. 
uh, she survived, and she was, uh, you know, in her panic, she was like, okay, I have a friend that lives a mile away, I can get my car, drive there, make it to the friend's house, and he'll call an ambulance, and she's speeding down the street trying to get to her friend's house, and she sped up right behind the, uh, the her attacker. Like, I was like, oh my god, that's his car, and oh my god, that's him in the driver's seat. So she drove to her friend's house the entire way through, having to follow the killer, or the attempted killer, and uh, in the reenactment, I don't know if this part of it actually happened, but in the reenactment, she stumbles on the uh, the doorstep of her friend. Her friend comes out and helps her, and the killer drives by and, like, stares her down and then drives off. And I'm like, God damn, that is terrifying. Fucking terrifying. And there are a lot of cases like that. I mean, that show, especially at such a young age, it really reinforced the idea. It's like, look, there is not a boogeyman. There are boogeymen and boogie women, and they are trying to kill you at all hours of the day, 24-7. You are never completely 100% safe. And that was just kind of the paranoia that the show started, and I was scared to death, but I loved it. I loved watching it, and I think part of me just enjoyed being scared, and another part of me, and this is kind of, like, twisted, I guess, there was a part of me that felt like it was my civic duty as an American and I don't know why I thought this at age five or six. It was my civic duty as an American uh, to watch this show in case I stumble onto one of these killers and I'm able to give information to help them, bring them to justice or, or help people uh, that were hurt or something like that. Uh, America's Most Wanted, too. I, I was the same way. And uh, it was, but God, there I had so many sleepless nights as a kid. And it was so funny because my parents were usually very, especially my mother, uh, was very hardcore strict about what I watched in my youth. I don't know how that escaped. I think she thought it was just, oh, it's just some silly ghost show that he watched. And she didn't really know what the show entailed, but I was just terrified. I even, uh, to this day, I, I remember the arson tape. Uh, there, they, there was a videotape of an actual arson, and the guy laughing about it, and he sounds like the Ledger Joker. I've since rewatched it. It's like, wow, he sounds like the Ledger Joker a good 20 years before The Dark Knight even came out. And, you know, even back then watching, I could tell it was just a kid fucking around, but it's like, this kid is fucking around by setting houses on fire. That's still terrifying. Um, but yeah, there was, Unsolved Mysteries was great. It was my favorite show as a kid, and it's amazing that I didn't grow up completely paranoid and unwilling to go outside, but yeah, Unsolved Mysteries, loved it. And what is your favorite movie? Love Rocky. Rocky's my favorite movie. It's the great underdog story, great characters. Uh, you know, it brings a tear to my eye every single time I watch the end. It, great, uh, just a great story, and it's a great uh, sports-driven story. And I like, I, you know, because sports to me naturally naturally lends itself to telling great stories, and I think Rocky is is the absolute best at that. Um, I, I just love everything about that movie. To me, it's just it's just absolutely perfect. Love it. I could sit here all day and talk about how much I love the entire series. I'm I'm probably the only human being walking the face of this earth that enjoyed Rocky Five. Um, but yeah, I love the original Rocky. It's my all time favorite flick. Uh, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, God bless that man for <laughs> uh, you know say what you will about him, but Rocky was definitely a gem and definitely deserves all the praise that it gets as a great film. Okay, and the final questions are coming in from Asia Extreme Infinity, but he sent in a lot of questions, so I'll try to cover these as, as well as possible um, while also moving a little bit quick. Are you from New York, or are you just a Giants fan, just for the sake of it? Um, I am not from New York, but my family is, and that's kind of where the Giants thing comes from. There's also another reason why I root for the Giants, but I won't say it here because you wouldn't believe me if I did. Uh, but there, there's another uh, more deep-seated reason why I root for the Giants. But yeah, my family, uh, you know, original, originates from New York, and the Giants thing has just kind of been a family thing that has gone down, and I just, in, I just inherited the love for the New York Giants. Uh, what are your favorite cartoon shows? Okay. Um, when I was a kid, I loved, and you've probably seen the t-shirts on my videos, I loved He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Um, as cheesy as it is, and I think of all the cartoons I watched as a kid, that one has aged the worst, but... I still love those characters, and I loved. Uh, and what really drew drew me to it as a kid was uh, the fact that they mixed science fiction with fantasy, cause, and that was just so fascinating to me. Because look, if you do, if you have magic and sorcery and sword fighting mixed with aliens and UFOs and and wacky gadgets, there's nothing you can't do. 
I mean, they, all bets are off. There's, you've officially established a universe where you can do literally anything. And that just really drew me to He-Man. Um, in addition to, again, I really like those characters, uh, especially Skeletor. I, I fucking love him. Uh, and Thundercats did it better, came along and did uh, the sword and sorcery mixed with science fiction thing and, and did it better and, uh, you know, looked better, better presented. Um, and so that show was great, too. Loved that one. Loved Transformers. Uh, Optimus Prime was a role model to me. Loved it. Uh, G.I. Joe, I really liked. Cobra Commander. <laughs> Fucking loved him. He was... I, I actually rooted for him. Uh, um, believe it or not, there was actually a show out there that made me root against America, and it was G.I. Joe, because I wanted Cobra Commander to win. Uh, and you know what? In kind of a way, I kind of saw him as the protagonist of the show, and it kind of paid off in the movie, where he finally wins at something. And, and you know, not in a glorious fashion, but he finally wins. Uh... <clears throat> I also really like the Batman animated series. I think that's probably the greatest animated show of all time. It's fucking brilliant. Uh, and again, I've said before, that to me is the definitive Batman. Uh, love the Superman show. I love Gargoyles. I think Gargoyles is kind of a forgotten one. And uh, Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles is great. Uh, what I've really found is that when I was a kid, I took the show really seriously. Watching it as an adult, I'm amazed by how funny the show is. Like, a lot of the fourth wall jokes that they keep throwing out there, I think are really good. So, Ninja Turtles has aged well in that aspect, where it's really, really funny. And I thought the reboot was pretty good, too, up until they did the flash-forward bullcrap. But, uh, yeah, the, the reboot that they did, uh, I think it started in 03, I thought was really good. And... I think they have a new show, show coming in on Nickelodeon, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, some other ones, some of my more adult uh, cartoons that I really like. Uh, South Park, I think, is amazing. And it, it, it's amazing to me that it's still as good as it is. Like, I think South Park's gotten better. Um, some people disagree with that. I think South Park continuously gets better. Um, and it's, I just watched the new episode this week with Cartman Finds Love, and I was just blown away by how funny it is. Like... They keep doing things with Cartman, and it never it never gets old. It's amazing. Like I will um, love that character forever. Um, so yeah, South Park of all the adult of the adult cartoons, I, I'm amazed at how well it, it keeps going. Simpsons, I loved in the '90s, um, and I still hold that up to a very high esteem. I think the show kind of wore itself out just because it's they they've done everything. Family Guy, loved Family Guy when it first started. I actually watched it from the beginning. I will remember watching it, I think it was either at the halftime show or it was right after the Super Bowl that year, which was Broncos and, uh, and Falcons. I remember that. Uh, and I loved the show from then. I watched it in its early years. I watched it when it came back after cancellation. But I think it's kind of worn itself out too, kind of like The Simpsons, only it did it much quicker. I, it's, you know, nothing against it. It's just the, I think the whole uh, act just wore itself out. Uh, Archer, I think, is amazing. I've really taken a liking to that show. If you have not seen Archer, do yourself a favor. Go watch Archer. It's fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, so those are the more adult cartoons I really like. Um, I'm also a big fan of the Looney Tunes. Uh, those those shorts, I think, are, are absolutely brilliant. It really influenced my sense of humor. Uh, so, yeah, I love those. Um, so, yeah, those are, those are, you know, a short list of my favorite cartoons. Are you a comic slash superhero fan, and who are your favorite superheroes? Well, I've already talked at great length about Batman and Superman and all kinds of shit already in this video, but yeah, I am a fan. I haven't collected comics since I was a kid. I kind of got out of that part of it, and I, I couldn't tell you what's going on now with comics. I know DC completely rebooted everything. I haven't read any of them. I couldn't tell you. I, I just haven't followed it. I just kind of got out of it, um, that part of it. Uh, once I grew up a little bit. Not not that I'm looking down on adults that read comics. It's just that I ran out of time needed to spend going to comic books. Or reading comic books and collecting them. Uh, you know, but I, again, I really like those characters. Um, and, and I am a fan. I love... Uh, my favorites are probably Batman and Spider-Man. Love them. Obviously, like I said, I've come to uh, really appreciate Superman. Uh, and I really like the X-Men. I think the X-Men are great. Uh, I really like... Uh, my favorite X-Men are Wolverine, obviously. He's everybody's favorite. And I always loved Nightcrawler, because he was Catholic. And I'm like, yeah, Catholic superhero. That's awesome. I can dig that. And in case you can tell, I'm Catholic. And I was an altar boy who was not abused. Uh, I get asked that a lot, too. It's like, oh, you're an altar boy? Were you abused by the priest? N no. <laughs> no. I got yelled at once for screwing, for screwing something up, but I, I wasn't, like, you know, uh, you know abused. Uh, but 
Yeah, I really like Nightcrawler. I, I, sorry to take that in a really dark direction. Um, but yeah, as far as comics, like I said, I haven't read too many recently. Every now and then I'll pick up a graphic novel and read it. Like I, I didn't read Watchmen until a few years ago, and I really liked it. I want to read Scott Pilgrim, the whole series, because I like the movie. And I, so I want to go back and read that. I just haven't had time. Um, I just read Batman The Long Halloween, uh, you know, I, so that tells you how behind I am. I just read that, and I thought it was fucking great. It was so great. I was like, wow, I want to kind of want to see, like, a mini series or an animated movie based off of that. That, that's, that was pretty good. But, yeah, that's kind of my whole thing with comics right now. Um, which do you prefer, Xbox 360, PS3, or the Wii? Um, I am not a big gamer, especially modern day. I love the old systems, but I just, again, gaming was just something that I just kind of fell out of. I own a Wii. It's, excuse me. The Wii is the only thing I own because the only games I've kept up with are Mario and Zelda and, and Madden. Uh, I, I do play Madden. Uh, and I, you know, I just wanted the system. Okay, which system provides me with Mario and Zelda? That's the Wii. So, okay. And I love... I really like Super Mario Galaxy. I haven't. I just got Skyward Sword. I have not played it yet, so it'll be. I've heard mixed things about it, so we'll see how that is. But I, you know, I love Zelda, love Mario, and that's just kind of. Oh well, I'll, I'll stick with those. Uh, so I'll say by default the Wii is my favorite because it's the one that best suits my needs, which are very simple and easy to please. It's like you got Mario and Zelda. All right, I'll go to the Wii, but. Uh, PS3 and Xbox seem to offer a lot more features that, you know, online gaming, which is not really for me. I kind of like to, again, not that I'm knocking people that like to hook up on the internet and, and game and stuff, but I kind of like when I play video games with other people, I like to have like a fucking party over at my house or over at somebody else's house and uh, play a video game together. That's, that's kind of like, you know, the social thing for me. And, you know, playing online, I tried to play Madden online and I was like, eh. You know, it's just not the same as actually being able to trash talk the person sitting right next to you, you know. It's, it's just not the same to me. So, yeah, I, I prefer the Wii. It's simple enough for me, and I stick with that. So, yeah, you go, go Nintendo. Um, what are your favorite video games? Uh, my all-time favorite video and I, you know, I already said I love Zelda and Mario, so, you know, pick the best games out of those libraries, and I'll tell you, uh, you know, some of the best video games ever. But, uh... My all-time favorite video game is Super Mario Bros. 3. I don't care what anybody else says. That game is endlessly addicting. I could play that game, beat that game every single day. I will never get bored of it. It is just a fantastic, fantastic game. Uh, endlessly fun. I, I will never get sick of that game, ever. Uh, a couple of other ones. Uh, my, my favorite Zelda game is probably still Ocarina of Time. I think that, that one was, you know, for lack of a better term, a game changer uh, for video games. Uh, love that one. Uh, a couple of other ones. I love Star Fox 64. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a big Nintendo person. Um, I love the old Sonic games, just to throw, throw Sega a bone. Uh, I love Mega Man. I love uh, Super Metroid. I uh, really love that one. Uh, I think that was the best of the Metroid series. Um, as far as wrestling games go, if anybody's wondering about that, I, I think I was asked about that, actually, in another Q&A, but... Uh, I, I really, I had no mercy to me. It's just wrestling perfection. It's amazing how I wasted a lot of time playing, like, the Super Nintendo games and how poorly they've aged. Since, I, like, I could, you, if you asked me to play Royal Rumble on Super Nintendo now, I couldn't do it. Because it's just, wrestling games have advanced so much since then. It, it's kind of like, it's weird. Those are, like, the only old games I played that I, I just can't play now because they're just too simplistic and too, uh, limiting. Yeah, you give me the original Super Mario Brothers. I can fucking play that in a heartbeat. So, and I don't know. But yeah, uh, those are some of my favorite video games. Super Mario Brothers 3, though. That's number one. Number one in my heart forever. Uh, do, 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 do. Have you seen any of the Angry Video Game Nerd videos? Um, I actually already referenced him in this video. Yes, I have. I think he's fucking great. James Rolfe is awesome. I know he's filming the movie right now. Angry Video Game Nerd movie. I can't wait until that comes out because I'm definitely going to... Uh, I'm definitely... <laughs> gonna see that shit uh but yeah i just think he's really funny and he really captures uh just the anger that comes out when when somebody's playing a video games and a lot of the things that he said and he's commented on are things that i commented on back in the day about these games i think my favorite video that he did was the battletoads video 
uh, where he strictly reviewed the two-player option, which I was like, that, oh my god, that brings back so many dark memories. Battletoads, great game. When you play multiplayer, it stirs up so much shit. And I, he just totally captured it in that video. So, uh, yeah, big fan of the ABGN. I think he's great. Which do you prefer, the Whopper, Big Mac, Superstar, Jack in the Box Burger, In and Out Burger, or Wendy's Burgers? Actually, you know what? My favorite, it's not on this list, but my favorite is Five Guys, uh, which is really big in this area. I, I just love that burger. And, and the fries that go with it are so good. So fucking good. Uh, and they serve it with this uh, vinegar oil thing. Uh, I, I don't even remember what it's called. But again, tastes awesome. Love it. Love Five Guys. But on this list, uh, my favorite is probably Wendy's. I, I, I love them. I, I like all these, quite honestly. Actually, my favorite burger from Burger King isn't the Big Mac. It's the, uh, or not the Big, not the Whopper. It's the, uh, uh, the BK Stacker that they have. I, I love that. But yeah, you know, I'm a big burger guy. So I, I've, you know, I've actually never had an In-N-Out burger. I, that's one I might want to check off my bucket list. But yeah, I, I love hamburgers, love any kind of burger there is. I, I haven't come across a burger that I didn't like. So, uh, yeah, I love all these, but Five Guys is my favorite. What's your favorite kind of music, and do you like jazz? Favorite kind of music, I'm a country music fan, but I also like uh, 80s hair metal. <laughs> so, uh, But I also like Frank Sinatra and, you know, the lounge singing type of stuff. So, it... <laughs> Uh, on my iPod, I'm probably one of the few people alive that has, like, Frank Sinatra, uh, you know, a bunch of country music, Kiss and ACDC, and Van Halen, and, and, you know, Poison and whatever, and, and like, you know, mixed in with the country stars like Reba McIntyre. I actually have Reba McIntyre on my iPod, not even kidding. Um, Hank Williams, Toby Keith, and a bunch of other stuff on there. I, I like country music. I think it's cool. I think it can be badass. Uh... Gretchen Wilson, <laughs> I actually saw her in person. She was really, really good. Uh, her show was really awesome. Uh, so yeah, my taste in music is kind of all over the place. And do I like jazz? Yeah, I do like jazz. It's 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 cool. It's jazz. Come on, can't go wrong with that. Yeah. And final question: Who is your dream girl? Great question. Um, I, I assume you mean celebrities. Uh, my dream girl. I fell in love with this actress when I was five years old. I saw Labyrinth, and I just looked at her and said, I am going to marry that girl one day, and that's Jennifer Connelly. She is absolutely, to me, she's just the perfect vision of beauty. And uh, it was because of her that I learned at a very young age how awesome girls are, and I learned a quick appreciation for the female anatomy. Um, she was, and it was in a very pure sense, because like I said, I was really young, and she was like my first crush, so... Uh, I, I just I just loved her and it's like when I look at some of the other girls I've been interested in it's like the dark hair and uh, you know not super skinny but you know voluptuous uh, yeah it totally comes from uh, my early early love of Jennifer Connelly I actually like I know she did that movie Requiem for a Dream where she's like a drug addict that fucks a dildo on a stage and when I heard that she does that in the movie I was like you know what I can't see that movie now because I can't see her like that. That would just... I, I've seen her nude. Don't get me wrong. I've seen some of the movies where she's gone nude. But I can't... I just can't see her like that. Like, just trashy like that. That just uh, that just ruins the image for me. So I can't... I, I can never watch that movie. Uh, another one. Uh, I got asked the other day, who your favorite... You know, Patrick, who's your favorite Bond girl? And <laughs> this explains so much about my taste in women. And some of the disastrous relationships that I've been in. Uh, my favorite Bond girl is Xenia Anatop from Goldeneye, played by Famke Jansen. And she, if you don't remember her, she's the chick that kills people while she fucks them. <laughs> she, so that explains so much about uh, some of the decisions I've made and some of the women I've decided to go out with. Uh, but yeah, love her too. <laughs> don't, I can't explain it. She hurts you, but you love her. It's like, have sex with her. You know you're going to die, but what a way to go, right? But yeah, that's all the questions I have. Sorry if this video went way too long, and I will go back to wrestling-related stuff next week. Thank you to everybody who sent in their questions. I hope I answered them adequately. I hope you all enjoyed this little departure from wrestling discussion, and uh, hope you all enjoy Extreme Rules tonight.